Hey guys, it's Ellen here and today we're going to be talking about patterns and painting patterns and drawing patterns and creating patterns to make fun designs like some of the cards I've designed over the years for clients like this Valentine's card and some designs and patterns in your actual paintings like you see here. Um, I'm going to go over step by step on how to create some simple motifs that you can do in your designs and how to incorporate them. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. See, this is one of the designs I go over. Um, and I'll get back to them if I can. If, you, uh, if you're a Patreon member, you can download uh, the motif that goes with this that we drew, but I go over it step by step. And if you don't want to, don't want to know what Patreon is, it's a place where I have exclusive tutorials on Thursdays and traceables that go with my YouTube and ad free videos. So check out that link and uh, you will see what I'm talking about. So without further ado, let's get started. And oh, don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up because sometimes just a little sporadic <laughs> let's get started so let's talk about pattern so you might not want to even deal with patterns but sometimes you might want to create cards or designs that have patterns in them I have a few examples of um, greeting cards I've created for clients over the years you know this is a pattern I actually did uh, it's all computer generated and you know I make motifs and I make these patterns inside the little guys and then I make an all-over design this is a design that I painted, then I scanned in, and it was actually watercolor. You can see the faded colors here, and all the different motifs of flowers and uh, elements. The Valentine's kind of in that pen and ink wash kind of technique that I showed you with the birds in the topiary in front of the doorway. So you're washing in a color, and you're doing some designs on top of a heart, and then you can do some wording also. Again, another pattern with butterflies with color within color and patterns within patterns. Um, another one, butterfly. How else, how, also how you can interpret um, patterns, you can put them in your designs. Here's a design I did a while ago with tulips and you put the pattern in the actual vase, right? And sometimes you might just start out just by painting like icons like these. I have a bunch of icons that I did and I try and interpret these into patterns. I'm just painting simple motifs of butterflies and little flowers and leaves and stems. And then I kind of mix them all up together to make a pretty pattern, different sizes. And here's like a ladybug with patterns around her. Um, I start off really by starting doing a sketch. I use a pattern, like a sketch right in my sketchbook. I have a, a lot of crazy stuff in here. <laughs> And uh, here's some newer patterns that I just created. Motifs, I call them motifs, basically patterns. See these little cool patterns? Just in just a couple of colors. And then I'll go ahead and I'll put it in my computer and then I'll turn it into something like this, which will in turn eventually into a product, fabric, whatnot. Um, I don't think if you guys want to get into that, that's just something that I do personally for work. Here's an uh, example of some of the patterns that turn into products. This is a teacup with the tea. You see a little bird inside. Well, here's a pattern too. <laughs> there's a pattern all over the, the uh, porcelain teacup. And here's my name. Um, this was made in Japan. I have a, I had a big Japan client a while ago. But you take they took the pattern and did it in all and kind of a whole bunch of products. Uh, it was also in aprons and whatnot. And so you can interpret flowers and patterns and even elements of like animals. I have a peacock kind of in here. Just like that. I mean, you can go crazy. I doodle patterns. Your doodles can be all kinds of patterns. And you can do them, like I said, I showed you the cards. So if you want to do for cards, if you want to do a design where you had um, the, like we did the bird, he has a pattern inside the bird. That was a great tutorial the other day. If you haven't checked that out, you should go check that out. Um, I've just recently painted some of these kind of patterns, right? And I'll go in and I'll just, my computer and I'll play around with that. But you can do that too. You know that really simple Valentine's one I did of like the the rainbow? You could just do a whole bunch of those and put it on a nice piece of paper and frame it. And that will look really cool as an art piece, you know, that you can give to somebody. They would love that. Um, you know, and they come up in thousand shapers, shapes. I'm going to teach you to just draw how I would do a pattern. I have a little um, motif traceable download on Patreon. If you're a Patreon member, go check it out. If not, go join Patreon. You can see it right here. 
and uh, just check it out. It's actually, I just give you um, extra content over there, exclusive tutorials on Thursdays, and uh, Chase is supposed to go on my YouTube. So I have a piece, just a piece of paper just to show you ideas of like doing patterns. Like I said, I showed you in the pattern you could have a butterfly, you know, draw a butterfly. So here we have a head and a little body, quick butterfly. And then inside the wing itself, you could put a pattern in a line. You could put a flower. It doesn't have to be a realistic butterfly. And again, you could have like little scallop edges creating patterns on your butterfly. Little dashed lines for the body. Could even have flower antennae. And so how you build this is that you would draw maybe a flower here, right? And maybe a paisley, which is this like teardrop shape. And then I would add a scallop along the edge, just like this. And then the inside, if you turn the paper, you could put another flower with some leaves on a stem. And then you could just put some little dashed lines going in the inside of it, more pattern. So we're building up a pattern right here, right? You can do this skinny little flower like that. You could add just another motif. Uh, it could just be something simple like, I don't know, um, another just leaves. Right? Or even a squirrel. And then put something off that. Got little things coming off that. You can do brand, um, just some berries. And then you might want to add another butterfly. See, and this time you might want to add a frontward butterfly. Just giving you ideas. It doesn't have to be a butterfly. <laughs> you could do this with a variety of different elements. You could do seashells and mix in the seashells with some coral, which is kind of a pattern itself, right? Um, and the seashells also could have you mixed in with um, flowers. So you could do a scallop shell just like this. You do a line, curve it in here, make a line outward, and then do your scallop edge. I'll go like that too. And you just bring the lines down for your little shell, right? This is the easiest shell I always think. It's like the curly Q shell. Periwinkle, curly Q, and then wing, and then you go like that. <laughs> so yes, there's just shells, and then you can do the simple coral. It's this wiggly shape. And in between all that, you could put little flowers, right? Who's to say you can't? Little starfishes, they could be just be tiny stars. You can just do again the squirrel here, the squirrel element. No one's saying that it has to be a particular way. Um, like a small sand dollar. See it, how you make it into a pattern is it bigger sizes, smaller sizes, you know, different shapes. So then there's an example of sea life. You know, you can interpret it nature, you do like a bird. We have so many drawings of the birds. <laughs> you know, just doing a quick birdie. It's kind of goofy, but here's the bird. You can have branches. You can have flowers with the bird. All kinds of stuff. This is just examples of how you can take patterns. And then, so again, like in the vase, you have flowers that we're doing tulips, just sketching roughly tulip here. And you take all this element and you can put it in the vase. And so you have created a really unique design itself. So I would keep this flowers really simple, just like I have shown you in this one. And you can keep it muted so it's like pretty design. So there's there's a pretty design and then there's the flowers and if you're keeping it simple that's a great way to go if you want to just draw a, like a bug or um, a bird like I had shown you in the ink and wash in just one simple pattern the ink and wash is just ink over the wash for a pattern like this um, heart one you know I have the ink wash bird here 
But when you want to get really fancy schmancy, you could have taken this bird and thrown in a pattern like this. You have those little patterns in here. And really brought it up a notch in an element that is different and unique. Um, that, you know, n not too many people will have. It's just going to make your design, like, really stand out. And this is just not, obviously, a tutorial about you know, watercolor field or trees and techniques. This is teaching you to think outside the box, to be more creative with your designs. Um, you can always paint realistic flowers and trees and bushes and fruit and whatnot, but take it up a notch. You could have your fruit in a basket that has a pattern on it, right? And if you don't see anything you like and you want to create a pattern, this is the way you do it, you know? So like I said, you have the vase here and you're just drawing like squirrels flowers, you know, elements, making it different. Put a little scallop on the bottom, scallop on the top, just like that. So also another thing, I'm going to grab the paper. Now I'm going to get some, we're going to go to the painting here. So I have my um, Arches 100% Cotton Cold Press. You don't need to have this for this particular exercise, but I have it on hand for me. So, um, but it does work better if you want to do wet on wet and if you like to do a wash in type of pattern. Um, I always say that's the best paper there is for watercolor. And brushes, it doesn't really matter. It's going to be whatever works well for you. So I might just, you know, start by really doing something simple. We can start by taking, I'm going to take some yellow. We'll make a, a nice pretty green. I have the cadmium yellow deep. And I'll grab some of my peacock blue because it's going to make a nice bright green. Oh, it's a little more bluish, a little more yellow. So I showed you the scroll. So yeah, just taking your brush and you're making, of course, it doesn't want to incorporate a squirrel. So this paper has a tooth to it, so it made these kind of lines that come out of it, but that's perfectly fine for me because it could add to the pattern, right? And then you could just do some simple lines coming outward on both sides. And you have this really cool motif already, right? I thought it was pretty simple. And you could go in here, just throw in randomly another simple stem with some leaves in the same colors. Another thing that will help you also is that you pick um, the colors that you want to paint. So for instance, and this one I had colors already picked up. I had like these bluish grays and these golds and that's what I wanted to do. It might help you or you could just do monotone like I did these ones. Just like in the pinks and the values are different, darker and lighter. And that will just help you also. So there's different ways you can do your pattern. You know, here I'm gonna take it up a notch. I'm gonna go in and take, here's my Elizabeth Crimson, right? And I can put a little flower in here. I'm just kind of making a simple bipedal flower some reason I must have grabbed an old brush because this is not painting well today. Now I have a thousand tutorials on flowers, so you guys can always just scroll back if you're having difficulty doing flowers. So at this point you have you're getting you're building the pattern, you see? And you can probably take another one of these flowers over here, maybe make it a little bit smaller. But same type of flower, right? I'm going straight to paint if it might work better for you if you're drawing in what you want to put in next. You know, plan it out. So I would say get some tracing paper, right? Because my original, you, you can get a tracing paper and you can draw out, you know, you can draw a few of these elements out like I have here for the Patreon members. And under the tracing paper, you can just draw, see this flower and go all around under the tracing paper, all around the area you want, and then fill in the other motifs as well. And that will help you. So there you go. So I have the, um, the pinks in there, you know, at this point, 
I can throw in the skinny little flower I showed you in the sketch. I might just grab some gold paint. I have this as gold um, paint that I've, this palette I have here. It's in one of the sponsored videos. I forget the name of it. Prestigify, I think it's called. If you scroll back, you see uh, one of my videos. This, And I'll just take this gold, right? And I'll make that skinny little line kind of daisy. And I'll put another one over here. So now you see the elements are starting to build with this design. I might go in and add some more purpley tones, blue tones. Um, like I said, you might want to figure out, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm just moving things around here. Um, what color palette you want to go for. So I'm going to take my Peacock Blue right here, mix up some crimson. I'm just going to work with three colors to make your life easy. So I have the Peacock Blue, Elizabeth Crimson, and Cadmium Yellow Deep. So I got this nice purple. And I can put another little smaller flower here. See another four petal flower. Grab the green that we had before in the beginning. And just put a stem going this way. And the green might want to get a little bit darker, so I might add some more blue to that. And you can just plop in some darker greens in there. See, we're still building the whole pattern. Again, we could grab some more crimson. We might want to make this flower a little bit darker. If we add a little yellow to it, it will tone it down a bit. So taking this pillow. So now we have some lighter flowers, some darker flowers, different color flower, different shape type flower. When this dries, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this. So we have those leaves and flowers. We can go back in and add some other type of elements. Um, I'm just going to put in like another stem over here or actually a purple flower. Put another little purple flower here first. And again, grabbing this green, putting the little leaves. So I might go back and grab the gold again that I had before. And this is when we can put in a motif that's not a flower, it's not nature, not natural. That's different. So over here we might put in this kind of like funky, looks like an eye basically. Shape, right? Do another one in between. And even another one. And then we could have either scallops around it or little, little dots try the little scallops. So it doesn't really make sense because it's not natural with nature, but it's a pattern. And I could do another funky one over in here. Maybe like a similar shape, but just different pattern on the outside. So I might go in here and make a little skinny. You might put a little flower in the center of this one and then have little lines coming outward. Kind of looks like one of those paramecium's or scientific experiments. <laughs> and then you can put little dots on the outside of that. But you see how they are not actual part of nature. They're just a funky pattern and I can go in here and do a scroll, whatever also. But in here I might change it up a little bit. I might put in, um, I might actually put in, I'm going to grab some of this blue and crimson and some yellow. 
Gonna make a grayish brown. Mm, I don't know if I want the brown. So what I think I'll do is I'll grab that purple from the head and the body and put a teeny little butterfly in there. All right, go back in and grab some of that pink. I'll just put a teeny little butterfly like I showed you in the sketch. That's a little teeny one in between those flowers. You can go and put a bigger one. Same purple. Body. I would wait till this dries before you go ahead and do the body because it would bleed like this one. And you put the antennae. Meanwhile, back at the farm, <laughs> you can just build up your flowers more. Um, going back in with this one, and I can go in here and add a darker value with this flower. See, I'm just taking the brush, pushing some paint from the inside outward, changing this flower. Same thing with this one down below. Actually, I think I'm going to fill in this whole thing with this value and then go back with some darker pinks. Kind of fill some of this up here and even make the butterfly a little bit darker. So you see how we're creating this pattern, right? And this is fairly dry. We can go in again and put in the butterfly wings. And then start building again with the greens out here. Maybe a bigger stem with another flower. Could have some leaves just coming out here. Now my green got a little dull because I had some red on it. And it neutralized the green. I could go back and grab the yellow and the peacock and make it bright again. Just like that. Mixing the color. So you see a small pattern that I've created here. And that's what I'm saying. That whole pattern could be on uh, any one of your designs, like the vase, or it just could be an all over pattern period, you know, and that you maybe, if you could, if you have a computer, you could put it in your computer and turn it into a card or whatnot or you can paint like this as a card you know you don't have to be stuck with just a solid image when you're when you're doing anything like that I'm gonna create a nicer pretty purple or bluish purple do like a little flower here so now that I have, and I might take my blue, it comes in, and I'm going to do a blue going on the outside here, with the flowers. Grab my yellow, the cadmium yellow deep, maybe add a little crimson to that, so it's not just yellow. It's a little on the yellow orange side. I just tap that in the center. And if you don't like that, we can go in. We're going to do something fun. We're going to add the gold. But right now, see how I have that pink that just got neutralized? And I really just want to have a darker tone again on top of that. So I'll go back in and I'll add the same thing I did here. 
again over here. And then even more so darker here on this really dark crimson flower. And then you could take that darker crimson, maybe water down a little bit, and start doing the pattern in the butterfly. Let me zoom in. So, a little stem. You can make little leaves. A little flower. You see? How the, now the butterfly became a pattern within a pattern. <laughs> you can put little dots on the outside. Right? And then the antenna can have little cute colors. Just like that. And same thing with the little teeny one. Maybe get the pattern a little simpler. And then do the antennae. Just like that. So I would go back in with my gold paint again. It's good to have a metallic mixed in with some watercolors. It's, you know, it just takes it up another level. It's kind of fun. I'll just tap in some gold on the inside of this flower. I mean, you don't have to add any metallic. I think it's just fun. And then I'll do some gold on the outside edge of the flower, hitting some of the white and then some of the pink, just like that. Same thing on this one. Sometimes when I zoom on, you guys can't see it. So I'm just taking some gold and I'm just sporadically sticking some of that around the flower. And I'll put the gold in the center of this purple one and this purple one. And here I'm going on the outside of the flower and the inside of the flower. It doesn't have to be on the, like I showed you in the birds with the wash. It doesn't have, the color doesn't have to be right there. And I can put some gold on the outside of these elements as well. So it kind of fits in. Might add some gold just around this little fun little squirrel. You know, little dots around this one. You could do another simple little gold flower here. I'm not going to show the whole page, but so you get an idea of how you can change things up. I put some gold going up and down the butterfly and then on the outer edge of the butterfly wings. Just like that. You see? You've created something totally different. Again, you could add just more touches of like gold or add little gold elements again. Little just gold, simple flowers right here. And then there's a simple pattern for you guys. Using different elements. So I had this funky little motif in mixed in with the flowers and it doesn't seem odd or strange because there's gold flowers, there's gold accents on the flowers in the, in the butterflies and then they have a gold motif. You see? And you could just do this and have fun. This is like a really great uh, therapy kind of situation here. <laughs> if you know how to paint flowers, you guys are really good at flowers. You can paint some stems and leaves. I mean, you're just incorporating it and just moving it around. So what might be helpful for you if you move the paper around too. I'm used to just making patterns, so I don't have to do that. But if you move the paper around and paint that way. You want bigger flowers, smaller flowers, different shaped flowers, different shaped leaves, little scrolls. We've gone on to how to draw these things. So I think you guys are pretty well, you know, I think you guys can understand it by now. Um, I'm curious to see what you come up with, you know. Um, there's so many different ways. And you can make it all monotone. It didn't even have to be these colors that I have. You could try, do some all, uh, just one monotone, one color. So one color, different value. So hair is like the peacock blue, for example. Well, that's mixed in with some purple, so I'll just take that out. So here's the peacock blue, right? 
the more water you add to it, the less intense the color will be. The less water, the more intense the color will be. So here I'm saying here's the value of this with some water, right? More paint, more pigment, less water, even darker so. And pigment, really less water, look how dark, right? Oh my goodness, you didn't even see that. Okay, let's do that again. <laughs> so dark pigment, kind of almost straight from the tube. A little water down from the tube, you get this. Even more water down, you get even lighter. Even more water down, you get even lighter and lighter. It goes down and down and down until you practically can't see it, right? And that's how you change the value of your color in your paint. So you have that watered down um, flower, I mean the color, and you can just go like this, right? And when that dries, you can add practically zero water for the pigment and make your stem and your center. I think I have a tutorial more monochrome. So you're doing the same thing with this pattern, only in just one color. And that's that. And then you before you know it, you'll be doing patterns in your designs like like this. Um, you will be uh, doing I'll show you some more again. I feel like the ladybug had that I took with the gold pattern. And this I took all those patterns and changed and add gold, black different flowers, motifs. You can have fun using butterflies, you know, all kinds of stuff. This is a little more sophisticated. This pattern that I did um, from these motifs. You know, what is a good thing to look at? Go look at tiles. You can create tiles. Hey, you can actually create your own tiles, guys. I mean, if you think about it, tiles, you know, I have um, the monochrome. Uh, of course, I can't find it, right? I'm trying to find it when I'm trying to find when I'm talking to you. Oh, yes. Pattern. Doesn't it look like a tile? Right? So, yeah. I mean, you can make like a tile painting. This could be, something like this could be really big. And that would be great in a, in a square frame that you could give to a friend, you know. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little quick little tutorial about patterns and designing patterns. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. And I, I, again, don't forget if you're a Patreon member, you can download some of the motifs that I drew out. And if not, I showed you how to draw some of them so you guys can come up with a lot of stuff. So take care, guys, and I'll speak to you soon.